Okay, this is a video on how to build a variable speed uh, potter's wheel from salvaged parts. Uh, this you see is a, a variable speed gearbox. It's called a Zero Max. And uh, it has an input shaft on one side and the output shaft over here. And you vary the speed from zero to um, whatever, like that. And the interesting thing about this is you can run it horizontally or vertically and uh, no matter which way the intake shaft turns, this shaft over here always turns counterclockwise. Anyways, uh, you can buy these new. I think they're kind of expensive. I found this in a salvage yard for five dollars. Over here we have a single speed uh, washing machine motor that I salvaged out of the junkyard really just free for taking it out. I don't know what the speed is, but uh, it's probably about 17.25, and so that's just uh, pretty much ready to go. Just uh, need to find where the wiring is. Now there's the wiring there, and uh, you know I examined the wiring and determined which two terminals are going to give me my my uh, uh, motion, and so that's pretty much ready to go. What I intend to do is to join these two components together like so with a coupler and then uh, fashion some sort of a wheel head on this end and I'll get back to you when that's done. Okay, bye. Now since the uh, the input shaft and the gearbox and the shaft of the motor were at different heights I had to shim up the gearbox about uh, 9 sixteenths so I used this piece of uh, plywood which I had on hand and then it was just a little bit too high so I had to bring the the motor up just a little bit more so I had this piece of aluminum stock on hand and I put the whole thing on this base because what I'm doing here is I'm just building kind of the drive mechanism as an independent unit so that's what I've got so far I've got uh, the uh, shaft of the motor aligned with the intake shaft of the gearbox and nothing is really attached yet Okay, what I've done is I've just uh, kind of temporarily uh, clamped this whole uh, apparatus down and I've hooked my coupler up to the gearbox. Also something I just had sitting around. I plugged the motor in, maybe you can hear it running. And uh, I've got the, uh, I can see, can you see the shaft is turning? So I basically know that this whole mechanism is going to work and I just have to drill the holes and bolt everything down solid and then figure out what kind of uh, a wheel head uh, I'm going to make for it. Okay, see you later. Um, as you can see, I have the, uh, the motor and the gearbox uh, bolted together on its platform and I've just uh, provisionally uh, clamped it to a workbench here and to see how it would really work out. It seems to have pretty good strength. The wheel is turning. I've just put a, uh, a pulley on there for now. I'm having trouble uh, getting it to run true, so I'll probably have to buy a better one and then I'll manufacture a wheel head on top of that. But uh, this entire project so far has been made entirely with uh, salvage products, salvage parts. There's a speed control here. You see it goes down to almost nothing and it speeds right up. And uh, at a slow speed, it's pretty strong. I can't stop it with my bare hands. All right, get back to you later. To make the wheel head for this uh, potter's wheel, I found me uh, a uh, pulley with uh, a 5 8 inch keyed uh, bore, which corresponds to the 5 8 keyed shaft coming out of the gearbox and uh, I screwed that down securely to about a three-quarter inch piece of uh, plywood that I cut out of uh, a piece of scrap and um, I'm going to put a couple coats of varnish on and then I will pin the wheel head on the top side for bats and then we'll see how it works Okay, here you can see the wheel pretty much completed. I still have it just uh, bolted to the uh, workbench for now. There's a motor, gearbox, and the wheel head turning. 
It turns, it runs pretty flat and it's quite strong. Even at slow speed I can't stop it with my bare hands. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put a couple coats of varnish on this and in a little while we'll come back and we'll see how it really works. Well I've uh, varnished the wheel head on this uh, potter's wheel and I'm going to pin it now. I've measured the uh, down through the center of the um, wheel head so I know where my pins have to go. And I just wanted to show you what the pins are and they're nothing more than a, uh, a bolt with uh, an Allen head end on it and a nut and a washer and that's what I have right here. You see the, the bolt goes down through the top and you put a nut on the bottom and I'll do that on the other side and the wheel head will be pinned ready for my bats. Okay I have the, um, the wheel head uh, on the uh, potter's wheel and I have the pins in and there's just a couple more things I wanted to show you before I uh, quit this video. Uh, I cast my own uh, plaster bats for uh, this wheel head with those pins ten and three quarter inches apart and this is my uh, homemade um, uh, mold. I had the local uh, metal shop cut me a piece of stainless steel about so thick and uh, I had cut a circle out of plywood and varnished it ahead of time so that uh, I would have the bats be about so deep, as deep as I wanted them. And then uh, I took uh, hose clamps, opened them up and put three or four together to go around the circumference of this to um, hold it together. And then I just uh, pour that full of plaster and you know even out the, the bottom of it. And then when it's hard enough I take uh, this jig that I made here out of, uh, out of uh, cardboard and I've measured ahead of time where I need to uh, put the holes for the pins that correspond with the, uh, with the wheel head over here. And then I'll go ahead and drill those out, not, not drill them all the way through, but drill them enough so that they correspond to the uh, pins on the uh, wheel head. And then I can go ahead and place that all right, so you can see I put the plaster bat uh, on the wheel head and um, the wheel is pretty much ready to go. I'm not going to do a demonstration because I think there's enough pottery demonstrations out there. And this was supposed to be uh, just merely about how a person can put together uh, a potter's wheel out of uh, salvaged parts. And even if you can't find these parts exactly, you can see that really all it is is a way to turn a shaft with a flat disc on it. And there's so many ways to approach that. This is just one way. Um, I'll post uh, another video after a while. Another way I solved this problem and uh, built another wheel. I just wanted to give one final shot to uh, show that what I actually built here was uh, a self-contained uh, drive unit. And you could just bolt that to a workbench anywhere you wanted to. Or um, you could go ahead and install it in some kind of a wooden or metal frame but it's all uh, completely ready to go and uh, that's the final shot okay bye